Oh, I've got nothing much to do these days. I spend most of my life just wandering around fairly aimlessly looking for something I can scrounge, something I can get for nothing. Like this. Can you see this here? This is moss that typically grows beside roads and footpaths and railway stations on. This is gold in your garden. This is one of the best things and it is so easy to harvest. And it's free. To harvest moss you need two things, a breadboard, a little chopping up board, and something like it's a paint scraper or a kitchen spatula or, or whatever. And it is so quick and easy, just put your spatula in underneath the moss, slide it forwards, and you lift it up almost like carpet squares or something like that, very, very easy. Now what I normally do is move it onto a sheet of paper. You may want to get a lot if you do, you put it into a bucket or a truck or something and just build, or even onto some sort of tray and build up the layers. So I'll now put another layer of paper on that and we'll go and get a little bit more moss. Because remember, moss is free. Now this may really interest you, in a lot of Asia, for instance in Japan and also in China, they don't grow lawns, this is their lawn, they grow moss and put little stepping stones through the moss, mind you, moss grows very well in places like Japan, but just look at that little miniature forest of moss. Another little tip, when I was collecting this, you might notice with the moss I've got about a centimetre of the soil that was growing on with it. Moss seems to like to grow on these heavier clay soils and probably does better on them than perhaps on potting mix, so bring a little bit of soil with you. There's so many fabulous uses for moss in the garden. You're probably wondering, like what? Well, like this. Almost every garden will have ugly bits, particularly in the shade, which is what moss loves. And in this case, it's a bit of paving that ends next to some rock and it's all cracked and broken away and it's just miserable. Whenever you walk on it you think, oh what a pity they don't maintain their garden very well. Well what I'm going to do is clean this up and we will moss this and you'll see just how gorgeous moss can be and what a wonderful sort of a band-aid it is to hide your horrible bits. Just one other tip, one of the things I'm fighting against here is you've got lovely sort of bush stone and they've mortared it in with a blackish colour mortar and it just looks wrong. The black mortar is dominating the rock. Again, hiding a bit of that with moss is always a good thing. Don't use black mortar. Now what I'm doing here is this is a bit of the soil that was left from underneath the moss when I was picking it up so we know that this is soil that moss loves to grow in. There's little bits of moss there too. That's just to give a little bit of a base for what we're going to do. The next thing is, you've got to water the moss really well. It was a little bit dry and hard when I got it, and it needs to be flexible and really happy before you do anything with it. So it needs to be hosed and really wet. Now this is the critical bit now, this is the trick to getting this thing to work. We're going to squish a lot of this moss very flat. It's sort of like pizza dough. You get your scraper and you push it down, here we go, onto the board and it, you'll find it gets a lot bigger when you squish it. So it's been very, very, very well wet. It's squishing out now. I've doubled the size of that piece. And once you think you've squished it enough, we start to address it. Um, so the squished one we're going to put on. And I guess a lot of the technique now is doing your own version of art. I love that piece. I love this one. Look at this one. Isn't that pretty? So I'll give him a little bit of a squish too. He's not going to get a lot bigger. I just love the colour of this one. It's obviously a slightly different variety of moss. So we might as well put them together. Now, 
I'm quite happy with that for the moment. You'd water it sort of every day for some weeks just to get it established and if it's a shady and moist area that will spread so all I've done is make it a bit jagged and natural looking and leave it to spread. If you say well I haven't got a thing like that I want to hide you can grow moss in pots or containers and you, you create this stunning look it's almost like you're looking down on a tropical rainforest from a, a helicopter or something beautiful shades of greens and little mounds and all the rest of it beautiful stuff there's no limit to this obviously you can put them on bonsai plants but moss is just a great thing wherever you've got shady moist areas you can use moss to create fabulous effects and this here over time will spread out around here it will colonize the areas that it likes and all of a sudden what was once an ugly area will become one of the pretty little bits of the garden a vein of green running through the garden here moss is really wonderful one little caveat however don't take moss from the bush by all means take it from footpaths and roadways and safely at railway stations or whatever but in bushland in native bushland it should not be touched ever but gee whiz i love moss Never forget, gardening is all about cheating. Gardening is about taking an area that is one thing and making it look like something else. You might have a bare backyard and you turn it into a rainforest or whatever. But the whole thing is hiding the boring bits and making it look better. No better servant for that process than the humble moss. <laughs>